Hello everyone, Wolfie here. May the light shine upon you, or whatever the paladins say. Welcome to the part 2 of successfully starting as a paladin in TBC. Today we're gonna follow the gentle side of it and dive into class and spec that is almost 100% dominated by female characters. Now this might come as a shock to you, but female paladins in-game are almost always played by guys. Yeah. Anyway, use the bubble regardless. We already talked about retribution and roundness of its talent tree without much flexibility. But Holy Paladin, on the other hand, it does allow changing spec to an extent if you want to experiment with different tactics. Nothing too much, don't be wild. I would suggest the optimal, widely used spec which gives you maximum healing performance and raid utility. Talents of interest are Divine Intellect, of course, due to increasing your overall intellect by 10%, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Spiritual Focus, talent that almost negates pushback on healing spells, Healing Light, for obvious reasons, Divine Illumination, sustaining talent that focuses on rewarding healing crits in a mana back manner. Holy Guidance, which again wants intellect to increase your healing power and it works together with sanctified light talent. These talents are essential to be proper holodin. Rest are supportive and work either in synergy or just boost other aspects. As for talents from protection and attribution trees, they are mainly focused on raid support and utilities, but more about it in a moment. While on topic of why intellect is good for paladins, let's go over stats. Healing power from the start will be your number one stat to go for. It's rudimentary from classic vanilla, since if anything, holy paladins got nerfed. But healing power is what makes a healer a healer, so it's never a bad choice. Moving forward, of course, it's intellect, for more than one reason. First of all, talent increases your overall intellect by 10%, then you want a bigger mana pool for the obvious reasons of casting more heals in longer fights, Third reason is that intellect increases your critical chance which goes back around to sustainability through the talent, where 80 intellect points increase crit for 1%. And lastly, but not the least, the holy guidance increases healing power for 35% of your intellect. Intellect being on second spot and not on the first means that you should go for pieces with healing power that have intellect on them and not for other combinations. Third stat for Paladin is Flat Spell Crit, but never the gem for it, you just get it where you can. It's followed by MP5 and just like Flat Spell Crit, it's additional stat on items you want. Not too important, but definitely welcome. Lastly, the defensive stat is Stamina, helps with survivability, I prefer it over Spirit honestly. I'd rather go for MP5 than Spirit. Holy Paladin's rotation is never set in stone, just like any other healer, but Holy Paladin is just washed down Priest, where Priest is more universal, Paladin's healing spells arsenal can be counted on one hand's fingers. You have Flash of Light, Holy Light, Holy Shock, and Lay on Hands pretty much. You can count Seal of Light, but it's a passive healing. Flash of Light is your main go-to healing spell. Fast medium heal to keep the tank topped off where Holy Light is slow, big heal that also costs more. If you know when and where to expect big damage spike, you want to switch from Flash of Light to Holy Light. But take into consideration that it has a longer cast time. This is where another talent comes into play. Light's Grace decreases cast time on your next Holy Light after your initial Holy Light for next 15 seconds. So casting Holy Light every 15 seconds and keeping up the talent proc is a good idea. And you can cast lower rank so you don't waste mana. That's pretty much it. The general rule of thumb is spam flash of light until the tank needs a fat heal. Holy Shock is an instant small heal in case DPS drops fast or you have to move while healing a tank due to boss mechanics. Lay on hands is interesting as it drains all of your mana and heals target to full. It's not suggested to use it unless it's last stand heal and tank is under 10% HP against hard or fast hitting boss. Due to talent, your lay on hands will boost the tank armor quite a bit and its survivability at the same time. Timed perfectly, it can save your raid a wipe, but the cooldown is long. Judgment of Light is optional. Welcome in early game for fights that have a lot of AoE damage, but be aware that it's two global cooldowns plus walking to the boss and back without healing. It's okay if you do it at the start of the fight and if you have a retribution paladin in a party or raid to keep it up. Other holy paladin spells and holy pally raid utility. Spells that help you to Holy Pally are Divine Favor, gives 100% crit chance on next healing spell, Divine Illumination, which decreases mana cost of your cast by 50% for next 15 seconds. Divine Shield is also an ability that helps the Holy Paladin the most, rendering you godlike for 12 seconds, allowing you to stand still and heal ignoring mechanics. Cleanse is again your dispel ability and Blessing of Protection gives discount Divine Shield bubble to Raider party member for 10 seconds. 
Turn Evil is your CC ability, but Paladin being Paladin is limited to demons and undeads only. But being 20 seconds fear, it's quite good. Lastly, Holy Paladin's offensive abilities are Exorcism and Holy Wrath, again only against demons and undeads. Alright, we're back. Consumables for Holy Paladin. Flask of Distilled Wisdom is the best option, no questions asked, but if you opt to go for elixirs then healing power and draining wisdom is my suggestion. Healing food of course, super mana potion and if you min-max go for dark or demonic runes. Lastly, for weapon consumables go for brilliant wizard oil for obvious reasons. It might get expensive but it's the best one trust me. If you can't afford it or you just want more sustainability in early game you can go with superior mana oil. I do want to mention that min-maxing food closer to the end game is Skullfish Soup. That's just general information, since golden fish takes are a decent option. Although you can use black and spore fish as well, since it increases MP5. Jamming Paladin is not as easy as you might have heard. Slamming healing power everywhere is about 50% correct information, but you are literally missing out on so much intellect and MP5. I'm not saying not to jam teardrop living ruby, just not everywhere. Next to that, you can use Luminous Noble Topaz, Royal Knight's Eye and Dazzling Talazite, or even Straight Intellect, because your talents are managing intellect just so well. For Metagem, you can go with Insightful Earthstorm Diamond, or if you can't afford it, you can go with Bracing Earthstorm Diamond. That goes for early game. Later on, in Tier 6 and especially in Sunwell Plateau, you want to introduce a lot more haste, till about 300 haste, and then everything else in intellect. As for professions, I would personally suggest enchanting, which brings you money making potential and ring enchants, and either alchemy or some gathering profession. Other possible combination would be mining and jewel crafting or mining and engineering. Up to your preferences, really. I wouldn't suggest tailoring or blacksmithing, not even leatherworking. I want to mention that I researched quite a bit around on the forums, guides, and. Uh, discords, and everywhere I found some mistakes. Like haste potion for casting, unicolor jamming, or claiming that mighty restoration flask is best in slot, etc. I don't say that my guide is 100% perfect, I'm trying to split paladin on specs and introduce you each spec on its own, without fluff or mixed informations. Anyway, consider this as just a heads up not to focus on one guide, but check out a few and create your own picture. That's about it, stay safe and have fun playing the Holy Paladin and the game. I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.